Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now, in this video, we're going to be going over the start of a top down shooter. Um, so, I've procured some sprites again from my favorite website, Graphic River. I will probably link these in the description. Uh, the downloadable project for this uh, tutorial won't have these sprites in it, I will grey them out or something like I did with the. Um, uh, what tutorial was it? Uh, the platformer tutorial. Um, sorry, I'm losing my mind, guys. But uh, yeah, so let's get started. So for the top-down shooter, we're just going to be doing the standard WSAD movement, left click to fire. We'll have some crates in the room and just some basic floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag in some of these sprites. We're going to call this BG floor and we'll create ourselves a room. Now I should mention this is going to be a physics-based um, a physics-based uh, approach. Uh, like most of my tutorials, um, I don't usually use the standard uh, Game Maker 8 style uh, place meeting and collision points and things like that. I, I do use collision points just for some ray casting type stuff sometimes, but most of the time I tend to use the physics system if I can. So let's bring a background in. It's going to be BG floor. We're just going to tile that across the room, and that's going to be the surface that our player walks on. Not pretty, but we're not going for a level design tutorial. We're just going to be creating the start of our um, uh, top-down shooter. So I'm just going to call this room here RM underscore TDS underscore main. Something simple like that. Set the speed to 60 frames per second. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sprite. Let's call this sprite player. Uh, I'm going to edit the sprite and I'm going to open and add some some assets that I've already saved namely these ones. So this is going to be our walking sprite. I'm going to open these up and there we have our walking animation. I'm just going to call this walking and I'm going to center that sprite as well. Uh, I'm going to create another sprite and it's going to be called Spear Player Fire. I'm going to do the same process I did before whereby I add the two sprites that I have firing and this is going to be our firing animation. Center those sprites and select OK. So in this video we're probably going to be covering the creation of our level and uh, some basic movements uh, and in the coming videos we'll handle things like uh, collisions with the crate and firing uh, weaponry. So let's create an object, call this object underscore player and give it the sprite of player walking. Uh, it doesn't need a parrot, it does need to use physics and we're just going to make this a circle and what I'll do is I'll just make this circle just a little bit smaller than the player is himself. Jump into your room and uh, let's add the player to our map. There he is. Uh, I'll zoom in on that just in case you couldn't see it. There he is. So now the first thing we need to do is set up our movement. So the first thing I like to do is get the animation speed working properly. So in my create event I'm just going to say image speed equals 0 0.3 and that's a number that I've just come to know and work with and it's usually pretty good a pretty good ballpark to start with 0 0.3 I think it's slightly too fast for this sprite so I'm just gonna slow that down to maybe 0 0.2 we'll see where that takes us yep 0 0.2 looks pretty much good now in our room again I'm going to create a view now this room is only 640 by 480 so I'm gonna make this view 320 by 240 uh, visible in room starts and enable the use of views. I'm also going to make it follow the player. Now we're going to change this later. Uh, we're going to use some really cool techniques to get some better um, better effects. Uh, now in your H border, set that to 320 and your vertical border 240 and that will center the view on the player. Just like that. Now what you'll notice is it's quite blurry. We can fix that by jumping into our global game settings. Uh, whatever operating system you're on, select the tab. So if you're on Mac, go to Mac and then graphics same for Linux, Linux and graphics, uh, but I'm just going to go Windows, graphics, and I'm going to untick the box, interpolate between, sorry, interpolate colors between pixels. This basically disables Game Maker's inbuilt scaling algorithm uh, and makes the makes the image scale up on a nearest neighbor type solution, which basically gives us crisper images, especially since we're only doubling the pixel uh, count. So we're zoomed in on a multiple of two. We could zoom in on a multiple of four and it would also look good, but that's going to be just a little bit too close for our game, I think. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is the walking. So just jump into your player. Uh, let's add a step event. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll get mouse look working. So 
this is quite easy. Basically, all we need to know is the direction to the mouse. So I'm just going to call this mouse dir equals point direction. It's going to be from the player's PHY position X, POSI, position X, and PHY, POS, position Y to the mouse coordinate X and the mouse coordinate Y. That's going to give us the direction that our player needs to face. Now we can rotate the player really easily by modifying the physics engine's rotation, which is PHY uh, rotation equals mouse underscore dir. Let's quickly run that and have a look what that does. Uh, oh, of course, we need to set uh, physics on the room, I think. So if we go back into our room, select the physics uh, room is a physics world and get rid of this gravity because we don't need gravity because we're working from a top-down perspective I think that should fix our issue there we go so what you'll notice is the player is actually inverted so as I'm behind him he's in front of me and if I'm in front of him he is behind me that is not the desired effect now that is the difference between game makers handling of directions and box 2D's handling of directions so in order to fix that we just need to make that negative mouse direction and to make this easier we'll actually make this negative point direction so we're basically just inverting the number that comes back from this and storing that in mouse direction so that way we don't need to use negative mouse direction all the time we can just use mouse direction because that makes more sense so now what you'll notice is our player uh, will point towards our mouse we can do some quick movements like that uh, one thing you will notice is that his speed is actually sorry his uh he is sorry his animation speed he's animating but he's not moving we can correct that quite easily uh, we're going to use phy underscore speed underscore no I think phy speed what's that phy underscore speed yep I think phy underscore speed represents a a value of moving in a single direction. So what we can do is we can say image speed equals PHY speed and we'll see what that gives us. Obviously no speed equals no animation but we'll need to see and tweak this number after we start adding in some basic movement. So the next thing I'll do is I'm just going to do some uh, keyboard checks. I'm just going to say if keyboard check and it's going to be VK no sorry it's going to be ORD then a bracket, then a capital W, and basically what this does is this translates the letter W into a vi virtual key for Game Maker. So if the player is pressing W, we want to move the person upwards. So I'm just going to say PHY position X, sorry, Y, negative equals 1. We are missing a bracket here, I think. There we go. So if I push W, you'll see that he goes up. Currently he doesn't go down, but he does go up. Uh, what we could also use in place of this is PHY underscore apply force. Sorry, PHY physics apply force. Uh, from the X position, the Y position, 0 on the X and negative 1 on the Y force. And that should also affect our PHY speed variable. Now, that's obviously far too slow to be moving, so let's increase that by... Uh, let's say negative 5. The animation speed then was off the charts, so it was way too fast. As you can see, we start moving and he just goes nuts. His animation speed is way too high. Let's divide that by 10. We're just going to play with these numbers until we get something that looks good. That looks a bit more realistic, I think, in terms of animation speed, but our player is not moving nearly fast enough. So let's make this negative 16 and see what happens. That looks pretty good. Now it does look a little bit like he's ice skating, but we'll fix that up in a little while. <clears throat> so we'll do the same for S, except this time we will apply a positive 16. And then we're going to also copy and paste this down here. And we're going to do A and D. Now this time we're going to apply zero force on the Y axis. And we're going to apply negative 16 on the X, positive 16 on the X for the D key and nothing on the Y. Now we should be able to move in all four directions but it will look like we're ice skating and that is possibly a good video uh, we will make a ice skating simulator one day. So what you'll notice is we have uh, some pretty cool movements there, I've just moved off the screen but the animation speed is tied up to that movement speed. I think maybe it's a little bit too slow 
definitely maybe a little bit too slow. So let's let's change that to maybe six. Let's see what six looks like. Yeah, that's maybe. Oh no, that's way too fast. All right, let's go with seven. Let's have a look what seven looks like. Yep, I'm happy with seven. Seven looks pretty good. Now it doesn't look like PHY speed is working on the x-axis. That's fine. We'll come up with a number that works better for the uh, for this later. It might be PHP speed x times PHY speed PHY speed y. Let's have a look how that works. No, that definitely didn't work. We'll just leave this as PHY speed for now and we'll calculate that uh, later because that does seem to work a little bit for the moment and you know we'll get that working after. But anyway we've got the basics of our movement here now we're just going to uh, uh, change these numbers here uh, the physics properties to get some better results. So linear dampening let's bump that right up that should basically slow our player down when we let go of the key the higher that number is the faster we slow down and obviously we don't want him to be uh, ice skating so let's bump that up to say 10 Now on the same hand it also makes it much harder to move so what we're probably going to need to do is speed up the movements so what I'll do is I'll add a variable at the top here called uh, move speed and we're going to call this one here 160 and I want to replace all these negative 16s negative move speed positive move speed negative move speed positive move speed and that's going to make it easier for us to adjust these numbers on the fly so let's have a look what 160 does for us yep that's pretty good I like that I like the movement speed, um, the animation speed is still not really exactly what we want, but we can uh, we can adjust that later. This is going to need to be PHY speed divided by, oh where did my divide by go? Oh, let's make it divided by 10. There we go. So that's going to give us our basics for our movement of our top-down shooter. I'm quite happy with that. The only thing that needs a little bit of fixing is that uh, pH, is that physics speed, the animation speed, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, so uh, the way we're going to do the animation speed, I think what we'll do is we will just put the image speed in here. So we'll just say image speed equals 0 0.2, which is the original speed that I think we had for... Actually, what we'll do for this is if it's uh, moving in the y direction, I think we'll say phy underscore speed underscore y, we'll use that and we'll do the same for s and then for a and d we'll use x and I think this should give us some better some better um, image animation and what I'll do up here at the top is we'll just set it to zero so at the start of the event the speed gets set to zero and then if depending on whether or not the player is pressing a key it should set itself Yep, there we go. So now you'll see we get animation in all directions. It's a little bit fast, so let's tweak that. Let's divide these uh, speeds by 10. There we go. And have a look what sort of speeds we're getting now. Yep, that's much more, you know, that's much more reasonable. Uh, I might try and speed those up a little bit. Let's try 8. We'll divide those all by 8. And that should give us a much more realistic, I think, in terms of animation speed and screen movement representation of their animation speed. There we go. And again, that's also uh, dependent on the player's uh, actual movement speed as well. So if they're moving a bit slower, you'll see the animation speed goes a little bit slower. Right, so that'll be it for video one we've got the basis of our top-down shooter uh, working we've got movement in all four directions and our player uh, following our mouse in the next video we will probably end up doing uh, shooting and we might add some barrels and some things like that that we can move around on the final video will end up doing some polish adding some linear interpolation to the camera just to make it look a little better and maybe even a shift to scope or a right click to scope uh, so thank you guys for watching, please like the video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.